Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Thursday. I'd like to continue with the teaching I've titled, Changing Your Mindset, because it's important for us to learn to change our mindsets. This is crucial because many Christians lead disordered lives. I've noticed that in developed countries, it's often non-believers who exhibit a change in mentality. Here, I'm not talking about spiritual matters, but they apply the principles I'm teaching in this lesson, even though they don't know the Word of God. For example, when it comes to saving money, I've found that in developed countries, non-believers who don't know God know how to save. They understand the importance of putting something aside for the future. They know that they might face problems in the future or they have future projects and they start saving now. But I realize that the children of God often don't want to save, citing their faith as the reason. They say they have faith and therefore they don't save. So, we need to change this mentality. As I mentioned last time, it's important to have the wisdom of the ant. The Word of God tells us in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. In other words, God has placed wisdom in the ant to teach us. We need to learn from this wisdom that God has given the ant. It wasn't given just for the ant, but for us as well. It concerns us. The problem is that the children of God often ignore this. They do what they want, following the desires of the flesh. But the ant has wisdom that can teach us, and that's why I'm taking the time to meditate on this verse. There's something I've noticed about the children of God. Often, when you have a job, you're well paid, you can pay the rent, you feed your family, and everything is stable. But once you lose your job, everything falls apart because you haven't saved. This happens frequently. When there's no more work, life seems to stop. But someone who has the wisdom of the ant saves because they know anything can happen. Take, for example, the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Many Christians suffered because they hadn't saved. Of course, in developed countries, governments were able to help those in need. But during the COVID crisis, some Christians who had the wisdom to save beforehand didn't suffer as much from the negative consequences because they had savings. And here, I'm not just talking about COVID. I'm saying that anything can happen. There are unexpected events that can happen, and if you have the wisdom of the ant, you'll save. You can't spend everything you earn each month if you have the wisdom of the ant. It's impossible. No matter the amount, even if it's a small amount, you adjust. It becomes a way of life. You must put something aside, that's wisdom. Even if there's no crisis like the coronavirus, you could lose your job, and it might take a few months to find another one. It's similar to insurance companies. Insurance companies take a regular amount from your salary each month so that if you get sick, they can use that money to take care of you. But it might happen that you don't get sick. Wisdom is about foresight and prevention. I'm not just talking about problems that might arise in the future. The wisdom of the ant is about preparing for all aspects of the future. Yes, problems can arise, but there are also good things. You might want to save for buying a house or for a trip, like a vacation. For instance, if you plan to go on vacation next year, you start saving a year in advance. It's very important. If you have the wisdom of the ant, you prepare for your vacations by saving. The problem is, many Christians prepare for vacations by going into debt. You take your family to another country, you pay for the hotel, and you have fun using money borrowed from the bank. That's debt. If you have the wisdom of the ant, you won't go into debt for vacations. Vacation expenses should not be covered by debt. You should start saving monthly if you plan to travel in a year or two. Set aside something each month because you are preparing for your vacation. By doing this, you're showing that you have the wisdom of the ant. If you have the wisdom of the ant, you prepare for your vacations by saving each month. Don't finance your travels with debt because you'll enjoy the vacation, but when you return, you'll spend months paying off that debt. And while you're repaying the vacation loan, other problems can arise. Wisdom is about preparing everything in advance. That's the wisdom of the ant. We saw that the ant prepares its food in the summer. It gathers its supplies during the harvest. It prepares in advance. So, we don't just prepare for problems but also for good things. If you have good plans, take the time to set something aside monthly, with faith. That's the wisdom of the ant. I'll continue talking about this topic next Thursday. We're now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the letter of Paul to the Colossians. We have seen that even though the Colossians are steadfast in their faith and love for God, Paul warns and cautions them about what can happen if they turn away from God. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, he first tells them to set their minds on things above, not on things on the earth. But what does it mean to set your mind on things on the earth? Today, there are Christians who are attached to the world. They are attached to material things like cars, children, marriage, and visas. 
Some Christians even leave the church because they haven't received these things. I know someone who came to church seeking God because she wanted a child, but when she didn't get her child, she left the church. Many people abandon the church when they don't find what they were looking for. So, it's very important for Christians to learn to set their minds on things above, on spiritual things, rather than on earthly things. When you set your mind on earthly things, you cannot set your mind on heavenly things. You have to make a choice. In verse 5, we see that he warns them. Even though it's a spiritual church, he says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. When you covet something that belongs to someone else, the word of God calls it idolatry. This is very important because you know very well that many people in the church are like this. There is envy, evil desires, but all of that must be put to death, according to the word of God. The verse says, put to death. How can we put all these desires to death? We do it with the word of God. The closer you get to God, the more the Holy Spirit transforms you. Verse 6 says that because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. I need to emphasize this because there are Christians who say that in the New Testament, we can't talk about the wrath of God. They say that the wrath of God was only manifested in the Old Testament. But that is false because here we are in the New Testament. And Paul says that if there are evil desires, passions, impurities, covetousness, and fornication in the church, then all these things attract the wrath of God, and the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. If you practice these things, you are considered a rebel in the eyes of God. This might be new for some, but when you live in fornication or pornography, you are a rebel in the eyes of God, and you attract His wrath in your life. So, we need to understand that the wrath of God still exists, but it is destined for the sons of disobedience. When you practice these things, you are seen as a rebel. Why a rebel? Because you are rebelling against the word of God. The Holy Spirit shows you the right way, but you prefer to follow the desires of the flesh. Verse 7 says, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. We can see that Paul is addressing the Colossians, who no longer live in these sins. They have been transformed. Paul is saying you were living in these things. You walked in impurity. You walked in fornication. But now, we see that they are walking in righteousness. In other words, Paul is warning them not to return to their old ways. For the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 that once we are in the Lord, once we have received Christ, we are a new creation. The old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. And verse 8 says, but now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. It is very important for the children of God to be mindful of what comes out of their mouths, because what comes out of the mouth can destroy your soul and your life. So there should not be any filthy language coming from your mouth. Verse 10 says, You have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Here, Paul is talking about the new man, and this is very important because when we are saved, we become a new creation. You cannot be saved, be a child of God, and still use the same language as before your conversion. There are Christians who do not change their language. You are in the church, but you do not change your language. But your language must change. Your thoughts must change. The priorities in your life must change. They must be renewed because you are a new creation. You are a child of God. The new man must be renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created you. And verse 9 says, Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. We must put off the old man with his deeds. I will talk more about this in tomorrow's Kanguka. May I am bless you, and have an excellent day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.